So we've, we've kind of been talking about this a little bit already, but uh, the next question was about... Uh, so in, in the Ratchet 2 and 3 commentaries, we talked uh, in general terms like about what the industry was going through back then. Uh, you know, like, uh, I think by the end, we were talking about the effect that uh, mobile had on the industry or social games. Uh, so what what is the state of the industry now nowadays uh like uh what kind of new struggles have come up and what kind of uh old struggles and we talked a bit about it from you know a technology and games getting more complicated but is there something else uh in that vein that you think is worth mentioning uh, this is a hard question to answer without veering into uh something that may be a little bit too inside baseball or is a bit too negative for the scope of rule number one of rule number one uh i mean my i think it it's hard for me to get into a lot of the stuff that i want to get into uh that's fine but you uh don't, you don't need to get into it because rule number one exists for a reason yeah I will say, I think the biggest struggles right now uh, in terms of what the game industry is facing, and this alludes to what we were talking about on, on before, is budgets are getting bigger and bigger, and games are getting, hard, and games are getting more and more expensive uh, to make. And a lot of people, and I'm kind of with them, seem to think that this is kind of an unsustainable path that we're on. Like, eventually, the budgets are going to get so big and the games are going to get so big that it's that at some point something's going to have to happen to sort of fix sort of what's going on. And I think the biggest struggle I think th that games face right now is figuring out how to manage teams and how to manage people and make things better and more sustainable for as these games get bigger and bigger. I think that's the biggest struggle that games face right now. And you can see this sort of playing out in the way a lot of studios are sort of reckoning with um, and again, not to, I'm not going to call any up by name, obviously, but a lot of studios are reckoning with this idea of how, how do we manage our teams? How do we put this together? And how do we continue you know, to make games in a way that's ethical and uh, where everybody is treated fairly? And I think that's sort of one of the biggest struggles that we're facing right now in the games industry that needs to be addressed uh, as things are going on. Right, because the more the more sustainable it is and the 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 better that people are, are treated, the more the more ability we have to make these incredibly large things. Because uh, there's not a lot of people who can finance a huge AAA game, you know, like uh, and so it means that there'll be a lot of consolidation, you know. Right. We need more and more people to make some large game, so uh, a higher percentage of the number of people working in games are working at fewer places than they used to, I guess. Right. Because those are the places that uh, can afford to make giant games. Right. Uh, but there's also, you know, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of smaller ventures than there used to be. Uh, a lot of places that are are trying new experiments in that vein, trying to uh, uh, different structures for management and and uh for uh scheduling and for uh creating teams that you know can make games of high quality for a long period of time so there are some some experiments and and, and gains being made in there but i agree that it's probably one of the one of the biggest struggles right now is just figuring out how to in, a, in this era where things are getting more complicated and more expensive to make, uh, how do you how do you handle that? Uh, and I don't have an answer to that. Uh, if I did, I I probably could sell it and make a bunch of money. Right. Uh, but there's you know there's also that like uh, just from a, a, a individual contributor's standpoint. Uh, there's a lot of uh, specialization now that there, there didn't used to be. Uh, and that's great because the more people that can specialize in something, the, the better that individual feature is going to, to, to be. And so we're seeing a lot of people who uh, 
really dive deep on one topic that we didn't used to before. Because it used to be you had to wear a bunch of hats because, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not talking about any of the games I worked on, but maybe in like the, uh, uh, you know, pre, pre-PlayStation era, you only had, you know, uh, 100 grand to make a game on, 30 grand to make a game on, whatever, right? Uh, you could pay, in really early days, it was you could pay one programmer for six months, right? Uh, so specialization wasn't something that the industry really needed until further along, where when we started, you know, pro- programmers and designers had already sort of broken out into a different specialization. Instead of every programmer needing to be a designer, every artist needing to also know how to code, uh, and so nowadays we have people who, who know the, the coolest things, right? Like we have uh, people who are uh, e- experts in uh, usability, right? Accessibility. Uh, we have people who are experts in tons of different business models, right? We have people, we have e- economists working on games. We have like, there's just, uh, you know, tech artists, which wasn't really a thing that we had on the PlayStation 2. Uh, like just all of these individual little specialties that people have gotten better at, uh, and I, it's you know it's it's not like necessarily uh, uh, anything more than the fact that our industry has existed longer, and so people are able to specialize, but it is something that we didn't really have a lot back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, he's red. I'm getting. Flashbacks to the uh, to Quark in the Forest. Kind of <laughs> Path of Death. Murderer. No, 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 no! It's me. It be me, Quantum. See? He will pay for defiling our captain's head like that. Both are ye. Are they drinking grog? <laughs> it seems like a really weird thing to build a robot to do, but I guess if you're gonna build a robot pirate, you just gotta do it right. And right means swilling grog. Whatever yeah. the hell that means to a robot. Can you imagine like you you're writing you're writing the OS for these these robots and someone comes up to you and they're like, okay, 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 okay. We need the robots to get drunk. <laughs> but only when they drink grog. And then we need to do something with the liquid afterwards. This is butt humor in case people didn't. Let's see. So this one's a two parter. Okay. Uh, uh, so the first part is, do you have ideas you'd want to see in a future Ratchet and Clank game? And the second one is, what what was the tech Naughty Dog gave us, and how did it help? Uh, so uh, I think I'll go on the first one. Uh, so I haven't played much further than this in this game, so they might have actually already done this. And it seems like they're going forward uh, with it, and I love it. Is what I, what I wanted was I wanted the plumber to be Doctor Who. Like, I want there to be a multiverse of ratchets, different rivets and ratchets and all other things out there, but the plumber I wanted to be one constant. And he travels the multiverse through sewer pipes. Uh, And it sounds like we might be going in that direction, which would make me very happy. Uh, In terms of features, though, I don't don't know. Uh, I, uh, my, my favorite feature that they've had was the upgrade system that they used for for this and future and crack uh not cracking time um the 2016 game where you get the uh you you have the hex grids and you upgrade them that way uh but they did it so i don't really i can't really ask for that again uh so i don't know what about what about you any any features you'd like to see or directions or ideas? Yeah, it's a tough question because I've kind of left my thinking about Ratchet and Clank <laughs> days behind me. I, I was thinking that too, but I, I didn't say it. Um, 
Ratchet and Clank. So it's a tough question. I haven't really, I don't really give a lot of thought into how to improve Ratchet and Clank just because I like what they're doing and it's, you know, I don't see a lot of value in saying like, oh, here's what I would do different because it's ultimately meaningless for, to, to make those, to make those kind of things. Um, but if I'm on the spot and I have to think of some stuff, which you are. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's difficult to say. More spherical worlds with trains on them? I will say, you know what I would like to see? Uh, I would like to see Insomniac take another stab at a multiplayer uh, combat game. Ratchet and Clank style? Yeah, so I mean, maybe, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying bring back the old Up Your Arsenal multiplayer, mm -hmm. but... I feel like multiplayer shooters, there's a good variety. Well, so th there's a possibility for a lot of variety. Unfortunately, a lot of them have just sort of devolved into things like battle royales and that kind of stuff. But doing a battle royale with Ratchet and Clank weapons would actually be kind of fun. That would. You know, doing another kind of... Um, I feel like there's a lot of room to really innovate in the multiplayer space when you deal with a lot of the big bombastic stuff that exists in the Ratchet and Clank mm -hmm. sort of world that you don't see in other games. And, uh, and, and traversal also being and traversal. an important part of it, yeah. I, and I, I, I don't know if this, is a, if this is an unpopular opinion or not, but I actually, I really love that Splatoon was out there doing something different in the multiplayer right. shooter sort of space, right? It was the really popular. Of, Splatoon was super yeah. popular. So the idea of like going out and painting all that kind of stuff, there's room for doing sort of w w weird, interesting stuff out there that I think not a lot of multiplayer games are really doing. And I think Insomniac has a lot of potential. Oh, I Oops. shouldn't have let go of the button. Um, I think Insomniac has a lot of potential to do something really cool and fun. Uh, in the multiplayer space. So it wouldn't be a specific feature request, but it's definitely something I would like to see from Insomniac because it's been a little while since they've done multiplayer sort of things. And I think the team that they have is super talented and super capable of doing something really interesting interesting there. So that's if I had to say what I would love to see Insomniac do, rather than have specific feature requests, I'd love to see them put their talents towards something like that. I'd like to see... Uh, uh specifically a ratchet take on something like a battle royale just because the the weapons variety like if you if you look at, at at fortnite right like one of their big things is how how different varied everything is or uh if you look at uh warzone right like all the different possible weapon combinations like ratchet is sort of built to have a whole bunch of different weapons and have a whole bunch of different ways of moving and to have like, it would be really cool, I think, to see that. Uh, that being said, I would not want to be the person that has to go to Insomniac and say, for the next game, let's just add some multiplayer. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I wouldn't want to be uh, necessarily responsible for figuring out how to do any of that stuff I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, not because it's impossible or, you know, it's just like... Uh, it's it sounds really hard, yeah. Uh, and that's usually the case with uh, with all, you know, actually that brings up a, a thing for me. Uh, one of the reasons why this question would be so hard for me to answer is that doing like coming up with what what features should go in the game has never really been my job. Like my job has more been okay. Here's here's the features. How do we make them? Like uh, rather than like that, that more creative director kind of thing where it's like, okay, here, here are the parameters of what we're going to make. And that's never been something I've been involved with. So I don't, I don't have a lot, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about how could we make this differently to achieve some sort of effect. It's more like, how do we execute on what we're trying to do, if that makes sense. Right. Uh, so yeah, so it, it's not a question that comes naturally to me. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that. But there are a lot of people who do spend a lot of time thinking about that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, various uh, uh, director roles, various producer roles. You know, uh, an art director uh, or or their team might come up with uh, an, an art 
uh, I, I think we used to call it a Bible, where you would uh, basically spell the art direction out very explicitly, you know, and that has a that that has an effect on uh, what kind of things you're going to want to put in there because you're you're you know, like uh, in in Ratchet and Clank, it makes perfect sense to have. Uh, an elevator that's a circle with a rocket under it uh-huh. that you could put in the middle of a grassy field. And no one would bat an eye at that. It's just like, oh yeah, there's a giant floaty platform in the middle of this grassy field. But not every creative agenda supports that kind of thing, right? Right. And so you're deciding, uh, like what we were talking about before on tone, but also every department that's contributing is also uh, figuring out how to do that. And that's going to contribute to that overall idea of what what is it that this game is going to do that's that's new and exciting and innovative? Uh, what's our uh, you know our core innovation, our our signature feature? How does this set it apart from it, its previous games in the competition? That's that's all stuff that is uh, decided by the whole group's intentions. But usually, I'm not involved with those things. It's just not usually what, uh, what my job entails. Is there a cutscene? Yeah. Man, his face is so chiseled. <laughs> Just because of the model definition. It's funny, like, Captain Quark's square jaw made a lot of sense for a low-poly version, and then we've kind of had to uh, work with that giant angled chin. The dimensions falling apart. The Emperor's all-powerful, and my life's in danger. Perfect time for a career change. And there... Emperor Nefarious is scary. Something was wrong with that water. <laughs> I don't know what, but it looked wrong. Was that the whole level? Uh, I believe so. I think there's some bonus stuff, but... Uh... Well, cool. And we can probably sign off this, answer a few more questions next time. Yeah, let me, uh, I'm just going to buy my sniper rifle. The headhunter. I wanted to see its upgrade path, and then we can go ahead and sign off. All right, what do we, oh, slow time duration, check and fire. Weak point damage. I'm going to be playing around with this for sure. But now you killed all the enemies, so you don't have a convenient target practice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess it's gonna go back to go seeing Rivet again and uh, seeing the story. And I think next time we'll have a new a new player. Uh, don't tell them that, then they won't come watch. Uh, oh God. All right. Yeah, I guess I'll be playing again. Uh, so for this episode of definitely not developer commentary. I'm Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. And we'll catch you next time.